Hey, smart Christians, welcome back. One of the most popular television shows on cable over the last 10 years or so has been The Walking Dead. If you've ever seen it, you'll come to find out that it's not so much about the zombies uh, or the walkers as they're called. It's really more about how they navigate through life and these walkers are kind of just part of the scenery like trees or shrubbery. And they have to obviously get around and navigate around them, but there's other issues uh, affecting them like the rest of us do. One of the things that they discovered though, one way that they can kind of move around the walkers and, and not be bothered by them is if they, and this is gory, they take the, the guts, the, uh, the dead blood and so forth that's inside them and just cover themselves with it. And when they do that, it kind of masks them from the walkers wanting to attack them. So I want you to kind of get the picture of this. They take what's inside the walkers, put it on them on their outside. And, and when they do that, they look like the walkers. They, they smell like the walkers. They walk like the walkers, kind of grunt and sound like the walkers. They move like the walkers. In all appearances, they seem just like the walking dead, just like the walkers. What you'll notice in that is that there's a striking similarity between how Christians today operate in the world today. What do we do? We take what some of the world is doing and try to emulate that. We take what's on the inside of some of these celebrities, some of these famous people, just regular people in general, and we cover ourselves with that. We walk like them, we talk like them, we act like them, we move like them. We go in the same circle and oftentimes it's hard to distinguish between the Christians and those that are in the world. A lot of people do this because you don't want to be attacked by the world. Just like in The Walking Dead, they didn't want to be attacked by the walkers and so they would want to appear like them so they can move around and not be harmed. Well, that presents a problem because this isn't a television show. This is the real world with lasting and spiritual implications. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The problem is many people have conformed themselves to this world. And in most cases, voluntarily and happily. Many Christians have adopted, like the world, this kind of live and let live sort of philosophy. And you'll hear some of these catchphrases that kind of go along with this. This love, 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 love. I just want to love everyone. I want to, I want to be kind. I want to be considerate. I want to be tolerant of other people. I want to be accepted by the world. Uh, I don't want any static. Many people don't want, most folks don't want any problems with the world. They don't want to be uh, attacked uh, or to be demonized, especially um, by those close around them. And all of that sounds good and, 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 and then you begin to start looking like them and, and dressing like them and talking like them and going to all the places that they go to. Well, why? Why would a person who professes to understand what's happening to this world, what is going to be the result of people who don't have faith in Christ, who know what God has done for them, why would you want to go back to that old way or to the way that you know leads to death? Why? Well, for many, because we all struggle, other people don't want to be exposed as a hypocrite. Maybe a lot of folks are leading a sinful life anyway. And so since the lines are of, of their godly calling and, the, and, and their worldly living has been blurred, it's easy for them to step back into that. And so there's this fear of being exposed as by many as a hypocrite. I see you doing certain things and acting certain ways, but you're a Christian. And so, so I'm not called a hypocrite. I'm going to affirm your behavior so that you don't uh, come against me and attack my behavior. Because what if they find out about me? What if they find out that I'm, that I'm struggling with, my, uh, with porn or sexuality or I'm, I'm, I'm not being faithful to my wife or uh, I've got a temper problem. I've got this going on. What if they find out about me and they know I'm a Christian and I don't want to be held accountable? Because see, it's gotten to the point that nobody wants to be a Christian. Christian 
being a Christian has become a pejorative. Being a Christian has become something that's that's not a good thing. Even though most people claim Christianity, but they won't claim it in the truest sense in the way that the Bible calls us to be as Christians. Because what are Christians to, to the world? Christians are hypocritical. They are judgmental. They're liars. They're backstabbers. They're just like us. They think they're holier than thou, right? Christianity is outdated. It's not cool. And can we be honest? Come on, bring the camera in closer. Being worldly and living in sin is exciting. It's fun. Remember how you were when, before you confessed Christ, how you enjoyed sin, how, how fun it was for us, right? There's this immediate gratification from sin and worldly living. You don't have to worry about the world coming at you. You can kind of be at ease and comfort it. And, but though there's this immediate gratification and comfort, there's also this long lasting consequence to sin. Some of you can testify to what happens because of sinful worldly living. You cannot straddle the fence and serve two masters. You cannot be a compromising Christian because in the end, uh, they still eat their own. Many believers have bought into this non-offensive style of being a Christian to where I don't want what I believe to affect you. And so we've adopted this worldly philosophy. But look at what Paul says. In Colossians 2, 8, he says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So there's going to be this philosophy, this, this way of thinking that is the antithesis, the opposite of what the Bible teaches. It always has been that way, and it always will be that way. The world is enemies with God. And if you are a Christian, that means the world is naturally your enemy. Now, what you want to do, what we ought to do, is bring more people on our side. The goal is not to become more like them. It's not like the old saying, if you can't beat them, join them. No, uh, if you can't beat them, avoid them. If you can't beat them, grow your side. We are not the, on the losing side. The world is. And what you want to do, a love of him, as well as a love for man, would want you or compel you to bring people into it. Everyone's not going to come. That we know. But to give up on it might indicate something about, matter of fact, not indicate, not may indicate, but it does indicate something about you. There are those who love this world, who understand the truth, but love the world too much. They're not going to um, commit fully. They'll give lip service to this faith, but still their heart is somewhere else. You can tell what's in a person by what comes out. If you squeeze a lemon, what comes out? Whatever's on the inside. Squeeze a sponge, whatever that sponge is soaked up, that's what's coming out. And too often for us as, as believers or professed believers, what comes out is what's in us. And all too often, it's the world. Notice some of our so-called Christian celebrities who have decided that they want to be Christian, in some cases, name only, uh, but still advocate the philosophies and the principles of the world. You've got here this Christian rapper who wants to be a political advocate for uh, a Democrat candidate who calls himself a pastor who advocates for abortion. I believe that health care is a human right. And I believe that it is something that the richest nation in the world provides for its citizens. And for me, reproductive justice is consistent with my commitment to that. Uh, I believe unequivocally in a woman's right to choose and that the decision uh, is something that we, we don't want government engaged in. Clearly, abortion is ungodly and wrong, but here's a person who is seemingly it's okay, abortion is fine as long as we get the right person in. Uh, homosexuality is okay as long as, you know, I kind of live and let live. You've got uh, Christian artists uh, or celebrities who call themselves Christian who advocate for the LGBTQ inclusion and, and, and policies and so forth. You've got Christians who also call themselves, or who, I should say professing Christians, who live a way or act a way that's just completely ungodly, maybe from the clothes that they wear, from the style and so forth, things that they advocate. And it's gotten to the point that even well-meaning Christians, people who are without question believers, are allowing some of those things to infiltrate us. Look at the way we dress sometimes. Think about this. 
you go back 20, 30 years, the way the way we dress would be would be considered sinful and ungodly. But now because everyone's doing it, it's the acceptable thing. And so no one wants to go out there and dress like they're in the 80s or the 90s. We don't want to dress like we're we're some sort of prude or something like that. And so we might dress a little bit more provocatively because, hey, that's what the world is doing. That's what fashion is saying. But you don't have to. You don't have to conform to this world. That's the point that Paul is making. John says, don't love this world. If anyone loves this world, the love of the Father is not in them. And so we need to be real careful. Are we really on the side of the Lord? Or are we really just walking around like the walking dead? We've taken on their qualities, their characteristics, is just so we can make it here on this earth. And so a passage that's been misunderstood, uh, I'm going to use this in the correct way. In Matthew 10, 22, Jesus says this, that you will be hated for his sake, but he says the enduring ones to the end shall be saved. His point is, you guys who are enduring, you guys that are that are fighting off this world, you guys, you're going to be saved. It's not that if you endure or, or whosoever shall endure at the end shall be saved. The English kind of muddles it up a little bit, but Jesus' point is, you guys that are enduring, you'll be saved in the end. You'll be fine. It's those folks who are compromising, who are being more like the world, who, who, who cherish and love this world. You're the ones that's going to find it, uh, find yourself in trouble. That's going to find yourself in danger of literally of hell. Amen.